Oh, praise to the most high. So tonight's topic is called Jezebel Hunts for Simps. That's tonight's topic. Jezebel Hunts for Simps. Let's open up with the book. Give me the book of Proverbs. Give me Proverbs 23, verse 28. Proverbs 23, verse 28. Let's start there. Proverbs 23, verse 28. Go ahead. He also lieth in wait as for a prey mm -hmm. and increaseth the transgressors among men. Read that again. Proverbs 23, verse 28. She also lieth in wait as for a prey mm -hmm. and increaseth the transgressors among men. This is the mindset of Jezebel right here. You understand? Because Jezebel is a hunter. That's what you need to understand. Jezebel is always on the move, spiritually and physically. Jezebel is always on the move. She seeks for power. She seeks for what simps. You understand that she can rule over and control. Read that again, verse 28. Proverbs chapter 23, verse 28. Mm -hmm. She also lieth in wait as for a prey. She does what? She also lieth in wait. She lieth for in wait. When somebody's lying in wait, that means what? They are, in, they are on the hunt. They are hunting. You understand? So that they can catch a prey. Because she's a predator. Jezebel is a predator. Okay, come on. She also lieth in wait as for a prey. Mm -hmm. And increaseth the transgressors among men. That's her job. That's her goal. To increase the transgressors among men. Her job is to slay the souls of men. That's the job of Jezebel. You understand? Jump down to verse 33. Verse 33. Mm -hmm. Thine eyes shall behold strange women, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. You see that thing right there? It says, thine eyes shall behold strange women, thy, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Meaning what? You're going to you gonna speak perverse things. What? Because their beauty is holding you prisoner. That's why now you are uttering perverse things. Read that again, verse 33. Proverbs 23, verse 33. Mm -hmm. Thine eyes shall behold strange women. Come on. And thine heart shall utter perverse things. So now what you need to understand is that Jezebel, she's a hunter. She hunts. You understand? She's hunting for simps. Now, there's certain characteristics that Jezebel looks for. Watch this. I'm going to deal with the first one. The first characteristic that Jezebel is looking for is that that man or that boy must be physically strong and mentally weak. That's what that's the first that's the first sign that Jezebel looks for. She hunts for that type of brother. The one that's physically strong and mentally weak. Watch this. Give me the book of Judges 15 verse 15. Let's deal with Samson and Delilah. Watch this. Judges chapter 15 verse 15. Judges chapter 15, verse 15. Come on. And he found a new jawbone of an ass mm -hmm. and put forth his hand and took it and slew a thousand men therewith. You see what Samson, Samson was strong. Samson was a big brother. He was a strong brother. You understand? He found a jawbone of an ass of a donkey and put forth his hand and he took it and slew a thousand men therewith. So you have to imagine this type of brother. He's, he's got strength. He was able to kill a thousand men with a, jawbone of a, with a jawbone of an ass. Next verse. Watch this. Come on. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the, the heaps. jawbone. Hold on. He says heaps upon heaps. The heaps is the heaps of the bodies that he was killing. These are casualties of war. Go ahead. With the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. With the jaw of an ass have I slain a thousand men. So now think about it. Think about this thing, right? Because today you might leave it back then. You say, okay, this is during the time of Samson. This does not apply to me. Oh no, how wrong you are. How wrong you are. Hold this. Give me Luke 14, verse 23. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Watch this. Hmm. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Come on. Luke chapter 14, verse 23. Read. And the Lord said unto the servant, 
-hmm. go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in come that on. my house may be filled so now the lord is sending the servants out that's you men we go out to war we teach multiple people we teach hundreds of people it's not because you have to see 100 people standing next to you no but the key is these men they are sent out to teach the nation of israel to wake the people up you understand so guess what you've got the bible which is a weapon of war you go out there to do what to slay all these wicked imaginations which are strongholds in the minds of our people that's the same thing spiritually though you understand read again verse 23 luke chapter 14 verse 23 mm -hmm. and the lord said unto the servant go out into the highways and hedges and compel them to come in that my house may be filled you see compel them meaning force them to come in that the house of israel may be filled watch this now go back to judges Judges chapter 15, verse 16 again. Judges chapter 15, verse 16. Come on. And, Sam, and Samson said, with the jawbone of an ass, heaps upon heaps, with the jaw of an ass, have I slain a thousand men. So now when you go out there, you understand, because don't just, don't just leave it back to Samson. I'm, I'm, I have to bring it out like this because you see israel is a bit slow so now i'm showing you that here samson was a strong brother he was physically strong watch this give me judges chapter 16 we're going to start at verse 2 you understand so as i'm going over samson think about it spiritually also you understand so that you don't disconnect from what's coming out we what you got judges 16 verse 2 judges chapter 16 verse 2 Read. And it was told the Gazite saying, Samson is come hither. And they compassed him in mm -hmm. and laid wait for him all night in the gate of the city and were quiet all the night saying, in the morning, when it is day, we shall kill him. So now the Gazite, that's what the, the Gazite, they are dwelling in Gaza. You understand? In Gaza. So now he's saying, listen, we are going to kill Samson. Because they are planning to put him to death. You understand? Watch this. Come on. Verse 3. And Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the doors of the gate of the city mm -hmm. and the two posts and went away with them, bar and all, mm. and put them upon his shoulders. You see what he did? And he took, hold on, he took the, he says, he took the doors of the gate of the city and the two posts, okay, it says, and went away with them, bar and all, and put them upon his shoulders. So this is a strong brother. He is physically strong. Go ahead. And carried them up to the top of a hill that is before Hebron. So now, this is an example. We're seeing Samson. We're seeing Samson's strength. He killed a thousand men. You understand? And now, you see, he's also showing, he's showing off his strength once more again. Next verse, come on. Verse 4. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sarek, mm. whose name was Delilah. Here comes the trouble now. Here comes the trouble. Read that again, verse 4. Judges chapter 16, verse 4. Come on. And it came to pass afterward that he loved a woman in the valley of Sarek, whose name was Delilah. Now comes the woman. Samson, you see how as physically fit and strong as he is, guess who's going to, guess, guess what, what was the problem? His mind was weak. He was physically strong, but he was mentally weak. So now what we're reading here is, and who's going to expose the weakness of Samson's mind? A woman. You see that thing right there? Go ahead. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. And the lords of the Philistines came up to, unto her and said unto her, Entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth. You see that? And by right what there? means? Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. It says, entice him and see wherein his great strength lieth. So how is she going to entice Samson? I mean, think about it. Remember, her mindset, she's a, this is a predator. She's hunting for a simp. She doesn't care whether you are physically strong. But the only thing she's interested in, she wants to see if you are mentally weak. 
That's why they are telling him, entice him. So we can see where his great strength lies. You understand? Ray. And see wherein his great strength lies. Mm. And by what means we may prevail against him. You see that, that thing? We... How we can over... I mean, hold on. How we can overcome him. Your job is to investigate how we can overcome Samson. You understand? He's physically strong, but we go, you are going to entice him because if he's enticed, that means there's something, there's something that Delilah is going to do to what? To weaken Samson. Right? That we may bind him to afflict him. Mm -hmm. And we will give thee, every one of us, 1,100 pieces of silver. Come on. And Delilah said to Samson, Tell me, I pray thee, wherein thy great strength lieth, and wherewith thou mightest be bound to afflict thee. So now she's going to entice him. You understand? She's going to entice this man. Samson is physically strong, but now we want to see if he's also spiritually and mentally strong as well. We're going to find out. You understand? Jump down to verse 15. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. And she said unto him, How canest thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me thee three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lies. So now Samson is telling Delilah, says, I love you. But yet Delilah is saying, listen, yes, you say you love me, but you have not revealed unto me your mind. Your mind is not with me. So what is she asking for? She's asking to what? To take over his mind. That's what she's asking. Remember, read that again, verse 15. I want to show you this thing. Judges chapter 16, verse 15. Come on. And she said unto him, How canest thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Stop right there. The when your mind is not under my control. That's the thought, that's the conversation here. How can you say you love me when thine heart is not with me? Meaning what? I don't, I, don't, I don't have you wrapped around my finger. How can you say you love me, but yet I don't have control over your mind? That's what Delilah said. That's why they said to her, entice him. How is she going to entice him? She's going to work her stuff. She she's going to work her stuff. And what? And hold his mind prisoner. Because at this point, his mind was not held captive yet. You understand? Watch this. Hold this. Give me Micah. Micah 7. Okay. Micah chapter 7. Verse 5. Let's read Micah. 7 verse 5. Watch this. Micah chapter 7 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Read. Keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. You see what God is commanding us? He says, keep the doors of thy mouth from her. Who's the her? The wife. You understand? Excuse me. He says, keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Your wife. He says what? You cannot tell your wife everything. You understand? You cannot. Let me say that again because God is saying this thing. Because let me say it in simple terms. Don't tell your wife, your wife every little thing. Don't be a simp. Okay? Because Jezebel, that's the type of man she's looking for. Those that do not keep the doors of their mouth, you understand? Shut. You just be running your mouth. You know what this is called? Pillow talk. This is called pillow talk right here. This is pillow talk. Go back to where he was at. Judges chapter 16, verse 15 again. Judges chapter 16, verse 15. Mm -hmm. And she said unto him, How canest thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Mm -hmm. Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lies. You see, you have not told me where your great strength is. So meaning, I want to, because if you can give me your strength, where your great strength lies, then I'm going to use that against you to weaken you. You see that thing? That's what she's asking for. That's why it says, you say you love me, but your mind is not with me. Meaning, I don't have control over you yet. So you can't say you love me. Go ahead. That's what she's telling Samson. Let's see if Samson is going to fall. Keep going. And it came to pass, 
when she pressed him daily with her words you see and that urged thing? him. Hold on. When she pressed him daily with her words. She's enticing him. Remember, this pressing daily is what? She's flattering him with, she's flattering him with her words. She pressed him daily. She flattered this, this brother daily with her words. Go ahead. And urged him mm -hmm. so that his soul was vexed unto death. You my way, he became emotional. He became emotional. Watch this. Give me the book of Proverbs. Let's go back there. Give me Proverbs chapter 7. Mm. You know what? Hmm. Give me Proverbs 6 24. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 24. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 24. Come on. To keep thee from the evil woman. Mm. From the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. That's what the Bible is saying right there. It says, keep yourself away from this, from an evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Because that's what Delilah was doing. You understand? Flattering Samson. She was flattering him daily. She was, he pressed on it until he became emotional. He felt sorry for her. He says he wanted to please this woman. You see this thing right here? Watch this. Give me that in 1st Esdras 4. 1st Esdras chapter 4. 1st Esdras 4 verse 26. First Esdras chapter 4 verse 26. So this is the objective of Delilah, to do this to Samson. Read what you got. 1st Esdras chapter 4 verse 26. Mm -hmm. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women. You see that thing? They've run out. That means now this man completely submits to this woman. She owns you. It says they've run out. When something is running out, that means you 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 are no longer you don't you no longer exist in that relationship. She's the one that is running the whole thing. Your mind is held captive by her coochie. You understand? By her flattery of the tongue. You understand? Everything about it has captured you. Now, guess what? You have run out of your wits, meaning your wisdom is gone because now she got you. Read that again, verse 26. First Ezra, chapter 4, verse 26. Read. Yea, many there be that have run out of their wits for women mm -hmm. and become servants for their sakes. And they become servants for their sakes. Now, She's the drill sergeant now. She's the drill. She's the master. You the slave. You understand? The roles have been reversed right here. Okay. Come on. Let's go back. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 24 again. Proverbs chapter 6 verse 24. Mm -hmm. To keep thee from the evil woman. From the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. From the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Now let's go back to Judges 16. Judges 16, verse 16. Judges chapter 16, verse 16. Come on. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily with her words and urged him so that his soul was vexed unto death. Was vexed unto death. Come on, watch this. That he told her all his heart. Stop right there. You see, what, you see what she did? She pressed upon him daily. She was flattering him. You understand? She was complimenting him. She was saying all these sweet nothings. Because he's a simp, you understand? He's got low self-esteem. He folded. Because he, he had low self-esteem. So he loved the compliments. Okay? And so forth. So now he says what? That he told her all his heart. Come on. That he told her all his heart mm -hmm. and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. Read. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Now watch this. Why? I want to show you something right here. You see what we're reading here? So that you don't leave it back then with Samson, right? It says 
There has not come a razor upon my head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I have, if, if I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak, mentally weak, and be like any other simp. Now, watch this. You see what we're reading here? Let me talk to you, brothers. You brothers, you're trying to entice a sister. You'll be telling her everything about yourself. You'll be telling, no, I've got money. I've got saves money. I've got this much in the bank. I've got this investment. I've got that investment. I've got that business that I'm running is bringing me this much and that much because you have that hero complex. I'm coming to the next characteristics. You'll be, you'll be divulging all this stuff, you simp. Read that again. Verse 17. Don't be doing stuff like that. Read verse 17 again. Judges chapter 16, verse 17. Go ahead. And he told her all his heart mm -hmm. and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. You see that thing? Because remember in verse 15, she asked for his mind. Now verse 17, she got it now. You understand? Because he divulged all the things unto her, the things that she he was not supposed to divulge, but he did. You understand? Because he was a simp. Now jump down to verse 19. Watch this. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. And she made him sleep upon her knees. Read that again. And she, Judges chapter 16, verse 19. Come on. And she made him sleep upon her knees. He says she, she, she did this. It says she made him sleep upon her knees. Because you must think now, I mean, Samson is a strong brother. There was no way that Delilah was going to pick this brother up and make him do this. That means there's things that Delilah was doing sexually, if you can read between the lines, she knew how to work her stuff to get to to have this mind, this man's mind to, to hold his mind captive. And that's exactly what she did. You understand? She made him sleep upon her knees. That means she did him so much so that she would just pass out. He would just pass out. A strong dude like Samson killing a thousand men with a jawbone of an ass. But look what, what, look what Delilah was able to do with his brother. You see this thing right here? This right here, this is simp activity. Watch this. Give me the book of Sirach 9. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 2. Watch this. This is what Samson did. This was his mistake right here. Watch this. Sirach 9, verse 2. Come on. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 2. Come on. Give not thy soul unto a woman mm -hmm. to set her foot upon thy substance. You see what she did? This Samson, what he did, he gave his soul to this woman, to Delilah, and she set her foot upon his substance. You understand? She walked all over him. He was the dormant because he surrendered his mind to this hole. He surrendered his mind to this Jezebel woman. And guess what? She owned him. You understand? And the thing that she used to control his mind was what's what what that was what was between her legs that's how she was able to control samson as big and strong as he was but delilah was able to what to weaken him you understand not only did he weaken him and look look at look i want to show you something go back to judges 16 judges 16 verse 17 then we're gonna jump to 19 i want to show you the reward she rewarded him with watch this Judges chapter 16, verse 17. Come on. That he told her all his heart mm -hmm. and said unto her, There had not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Now remember, he divulged everything. The one that lieth in his bosom, he divulged everything to this woman. Jump down to verse 19. Watch this. Verse 19. Mm -hmm. And she made him sleep upon her knees. Stop right there. That was the reward right there. She rewarded him with the coochie. That was the reward. 
You understand? That's why you brothers, when you be proving these women, these sisters, you better make sure that that's not the controlling factor because if that's the controlling factor, the sister will know that. When she knows it, she got you. Because now she knows where your weakness is. You understand? And she's going to exploit it. She's going to flatter you. You understand? Because she knows you are a thirst bucket. You understand? And she's a cup bucket. Excuse my French. Guess what? Now she got you. So when you are proving, you have to ask the sister, besides the coochie, what do you have to offer? Because you the prize. So as you are proving the sister, you are the prize. So besides the coochie, what do you have to offer? Let's put the coochie out of the equation. What do you got to offer? Think about it. You single men, you single brothers, you've got a washing machine, okay? You've got a dishwasher, okay? You've got, you've got, uh, what, what do they call it? You've got a, um, the thing that does the carpeting, you know, carpet, yeah, a hoover, you've got that. You've got a hoover that you can do your carpets and all of that stuff. You go, so my quick, I've got a stove and all of that. I know how to cook. So what do you have to offer? Well, that's the question you must ask. You must ask the sisters. Of course, I have all of these things. If I want to wash clothes, I just throw them in the washing machine. If I want to wash dishes, I put them in the wash dishwasher. So what do you got to offer? You have to bring something special. You see this thing right there? The coochie out of the equation. And I have all these things. What do you have to offer? Well, that's the question. You understand? Read that thing again, verse 19. Judges chapter 16, verse 19. Go ahead. And she made him sleep upon her knees. That's the, that was Samson's reward right there. That was Samson's reward. So he, he was a simp. He made a poor judgment on this one. You understand? Because his mind was held prisoner by this woman. And she knew how to control him mentally and physically too. As strong as he was, she was able to remote control Samson. Now, go back to Sirach 9 verse 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 2. Come on. Give not thy soul unto a woman to set her foot upon thy substance. Because that's what Samson did. He gave his soul to Delilah, and Delilah set her foot upon Samson's substance, his dignity, his honor, his manhood, his, his, max, his, masculine, his masculine energy. He, she destroyed it all. You understand? Jump down to verse 5. Verse 5. Mm -hmm. Gaze not on a maid, Read. that thou fall not by those things that are precious in her. You see that thing? It says, gaze not on a maid. To gaze means to stare. You are staring, you are staring sharply. It says, gaze not on a maid. This is a young woman. That thou fall not, that you don't fall by those things that are precious in her. You see that thing? I don't have to mention those things that are precious in her. It's the things that Samson, he fell for those things that were precious in Delilah. You understand? The box. He fell for that. He fell for the box. Guess what? So his reward was that, was what? Was the box. So you can imagine that Samson had to beg for the box. So Delilah had power over Samson. So the Jezebel, she hunts for those type of brothers with that personality. That's a mental hanger. That's a, that's a personality disorder right there. You understand? That's a personality disorder. Jump down to verse 8. Watch this. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman. You see that thing? Because remember, verse 5 says, gaze not on a maid. Now verse 8 says, turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman. Why? Because we don't want to, the Lord says, so that you don't fall by those things that are precious in her. So that her beauty does not hold your mind prisoner. I like the scripture in Jury. Would you get me that? Give me that thing. You know what I want, right? Yes, Judith 16, verse 9. Get that for me. Judith chapter 16, verse 9. Go ahead. Her sandals ravished his eyes. Mm -hmm. Her beauty took his mind prisoner. Mm. And the fortune passed through his neck. So it says her beauty took his mind prisoner. That's exactly what happened to Samson. Delilah's beauty and her coochie, the box, 
took his mind prisoner that Delilah now she had full control over Samson. You understand? In, in, in cybersecurity, they call it, she had root access. Hmm? She had root access. Zolani, you know, you know what I'm talking about, right? The hell is this? Go back to Sarak 9, <laughs> verse 8. Mm -hmm. Sarak 9, verse 8. Read that thing for me. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 8. Ray. Turn away thine eye from a beautiful woman. Ray. And look not upon another's beauty. Don't look, and don't look. When it says look not upon another's beauty, don't fall for the beauty of this woman. Because if you fall, her beauty is going to hold your mind prisoner. Now she has you. Ray. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. You see that thing? Many have been deceived. What's deceiving you by the beauty of this woman? Because your mind is, you, you, are, you are carnally minded. You understand? So you're looking at the big boobs. You're looking at the big bum. And you understand? And a pretty smile. You don't understand what type of demon you are dealing with. Because the bigger the bum, the bigger the mouth. I'm going to prove that. Give me Proverbs 7. Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs 7 verse 10. Watch this. Hmm. Yes, the bigger the mouth, the bigger, the bigger the bum, the bigger the mouth. Watch this. Proverbs 7 verse 10. Read what you got. Proverbs chapter 7 verse 10. Mm -hmm. And behold, they met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. Come on. And subtle of heart. I mean, this is an evil woman that we read about in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 24. So now he says, they met him a woman with the attire of an harlot. What is the attire of a harlot? Jeans. You understand? Leggings, mini skirts, bum shorts. You understand? Low cut top where your cleavage is showing. That's the attire of an harlot. Because when a sister dresses like that, what is she trying to show? She's trying to show how she's shaped. You understand? She wants men to lust after her beauty, to lust after her big bums and all that. Those things that are precious in her. Next verse. Watch this. Miss Levin, mm -hmm. she is loud and stubborn. That's it right there. Her feet. So, hold on. She's loud and she's stubborn. So the, big, the bigger the bump, the bigger the mouth. So if you look for those things, you understand? Because you want to prove, guess what? You getting you, you are a simp, you are looking for Jezebel. Understand that she's hunting you. You might think you are proving it, but she's hunting you. You the prey, she's the predator. Understand that thing. Let's go back. Go back to where he was at. Okay. Sarak 9, verse 8. Once again. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 8. Read. Turn away then I from a beautiful woman. Mm -hmm. and look not upon another's beauty. Come on. For many have been deceived by the beauty of a woman. Mm. For herewith, love is kindled as a fire. For herewith, love is kindled as a fire. So, but that's not love, that's lust. Remember, verse 5 says that you don't fall by those things that are precious in her. So this is not love, this is lust. The lust of your flesh, the lust of your eyes. You are using the outward appearance to prove that, you know, I want to marry this woman. Because guess what? You're not thinking with the spiritual mind. You are, spirit, you are thinking with that carnal mind. The one that is lusting after the flesh to want to fulfill the lust of those flesh. You understand? Of that flesh. So that's what's going on. That's what the Lord is trying to show us. Okay? And that's what happened to Samson. And that can happen to, one, to you brothers. You brothers... You can fall on, some of you fall under this category right here. Hmm, I said something there, right? Watch this. Now, we dealt with the first one. Jezebel, she's looking for physically strong men that are mentally weak. You see, these are the characters whenever she's going to hunt, she has to sit down and guess what? She must list the things that she's looking for, the characteristics that she's going there out there to hunt for. You understand? She's doing that thing. Watch this. Hmm. You know this thing, I want to deal with it again. Go back to Judges chapter 16. Okay, verse 17 again. I want to deal with the situation again because it's... Judges 16, verse 17. Mm -hmm. 
that he told her all his heart and said unto her, mm. There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. Mm -hmm. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Now watch this. Give me Sarah 33. Give me Sarah 33 verse 22. You know what? Start at verse 20. Sarah 33 verse 20, then we're going to jump. Sarah 33 verse 20. Ecclesiastes chapter 33 verse 20. Mm -hmm. As long as thou livest and hast breath in thee, mm. give not thyself over to any. You see what the, God, the Lord is saying? He says, as long as thou livest and hast breath in thee, what is the breath? Wisdom. That was given to Adam, Genesis 2 verse 7. It says, give not thyself over to any. Don't give your soul to a woman. Because that's what Jezebel is looking for. Jezebel is not necessarily, yes, Jezebel, she's looking, she's also looking at the, 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 the valuables that you come with. If you've got money, you've got possessions, you've got houses and stuff like that. Yes, she's looking for those things. But the one thing that she's looking for above everything else is your mind. She wants to take hold of that mind and control it because that's what's going to make her feel comfortable. Then she'll know, she'll comfortably know how to deal with the things that you possess, your riches, your property, your investments. She's, then she'll comfortably deal with those things. She's not going to be comfortable until she gets access to your mind and has control over it. That's why you see all these rich men you understand? They are simps. The woman is running the show because guess what? That's the main thing that she's after, your mind. Once she gets after your mind, everything else is, just comes by default. You understand? Now, read that again. Verse 20. Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 20. Mm -hmm. As long as thou livest and has breath in thee, mm -hmm. give not thyself over to any. Jump down to verse 22. Verse 22. Mm -hmm. In all thy works, keep thyself, keep to thyself the preeminent. You see what God is saying? Leave not says, a stain in, in thine honor. It says, in all thy works, keep to thyself the preeminence. Meaning what? He's telling you why. He's telling what that means. He says, leave not a stain in thine honor. You, you must be a man of honor. You understand? Because the Jezebel, they hate men of honor. Men of honor aggravate the spirit of Jezebel. Men that are in order, they aggravate the Jezebel spirit. You understand? Because the man that has got breath in him will be able to check the Jezebel spirit in a system. But that simp will not do it. The simp will not do it. The simp will use the things that he possesses whether it's money, whether it's property, whether it's investment, the simp will do those things because the simp, in his simplicity, he thinks those things is how I'm going to get control over this woman. No, 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 no. You're wrong about that thing. You're wrong about that thing. Read that again, verse 22. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 22. Mm -hmm. In all thy works, keep to thyself the preeminence. Leave not a stain in thine honor. The preeminence meaning what? You must always, the preeminence in terms of what? You always must make sure that nobody can have anything to use against you, especially the woman. You understand? Make sure that you bury your, your head, your spirit in this Bible. That's the job of you men so that you don't become a simp. Because a sister, yeah, you can, you can talk all these great things. The stuff that you have, she don't care about that really. Yeah, those things, those things, they're just what? Those things are just, um, how, how do you say it? Those things are just, you know, yeah, yeah it, it's the positions that you have and so forth. It's, it's a means to an end. But the thing that she's after, when you look at all the, the, the rich men in the world, the athletes, you look at the CEOs, you look at the, the you understand, you know, all these rich men, your Muthipes, your, your celebrities and all of that. When you examine, even those that are married, when you examine the women in their life, the woman is running the show. Yeah. The woman is running the show. And whenever you hear them being interviewed, they'll always be praising the woman. 
you know, I, wouldn't have, I would not have gotten anywhere if it was not for this woman by my side. You see that? Because he's always praising the woman. That woman has full control over his mind. That's what you need to understand. That's what you need to, you need to take away from this. So do not be divulging things like, oh, no, I've got investment there. That's what simps do. That's the classic sign of a simp. Even in the world, that's what simps do. I've got an investment here. I've got an investment. That's what that, listen, we've all been in the world. Now you are in the truth now. You better repent from that simp spirit. Watch this. Now, now I can move on to the next piece. Now, the second characteristic that there's, the Jezebel hunts for, he looks for, she's looking for mama's boys. Okay, she's looking for a mama's baby because she wants a man that she'll be able to control a mother. She's going to be a mother to you. You understand? She's going to treat you like her son. That's what Jezebel wants. Jezebel is always looking for men like that. Men who have an, an unhealthy, they have an unhealthy attachment to their mother. Jezebel is looking for that type of brother. The one that has an unhealthy attachment to his mother. Because guess what? That means this, he, 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 this, he's got a mindset of a boy. Boy mindset. So that's the one that Jezebel is looking for right there. Watch this. Give me the book of 2 Chronicles 22 verse 1. 2 Chronicles chapter 22 verse 1. Watch this. Second Chronicles chapter 22, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the inhabitants of Jerusalem made Ahaziah, his youngest son, king in his stead. For the band of men that came with the Arabians to the camp had slain all the eldest. So Ahaziah, the son of Je Jehoram, king of Judah, reigned. So now Ahaziah is ruling right now. They made him king. Okay, watch this. Come on. Forty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. I want you to With, stop right there. Read that part again. Second Chronicles chapter twenty-two, verse two. Mm -hmm. Forty and two years, forty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. You see, sometimes we just read past this stuff. It says forty and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. So he's forty-two years old. A 42-year-old brother, he's the king in Israel now. You understand? He was ruling in Judah. You understand? 42 years old. So keep that in mind. Keep going. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. So now Athaliah was coming of the lineage of Ahab. You can smell Ahab right here. Read again, verse 2. First, Second Chronicles chapter 22, verse 2. Go ahead. 40 and 2 years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. Mm -hmm. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. Now watch this. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. Verse 3. He also worked in the ways of the house of Ahab. How can you? Listen, listen. You see, you can always smell Ahab from a mile out. Read that again, verse 3. Hmm. Second Chronicles chapter 22, verse 3. Go ahead. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab. Read. For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. Now that's some heavy stuff right there. For his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. So his mother was his counselor. So I don't want to hear this thing. Brothers be coming to me. Bro, what's your, who's your counselor? No, sister so-and-so. Listen, you better just leave the camp. Okay? I mean, I don't, listen. I don't want to hear stuff like that. You understand? But if you're married to Jezebel, guess what? Your wife is your counselor. If Jezebel is who you are married to, guess what? Your, your wife is your counselor. Although you can have a brother in the camp, you understand that's 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 counseling leadership counseling you but at the end of the day jezebel your wife is the one that makes the final decision about your counsel because you tell her everything 
So what that nigga tell you now? What did he say? No, he said this, 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 this. That nigga crazy. Do you believe that? Hmm? Do you believe that? She'd be looking at you in your face. Do you believe what he said? No, no, babe. I don't believe that. You know, listen. Mm -hmm. That's the mindset. That these are the type of brothers that Jezebel is hunting for. Jezebel always wants to be in control. Understand that. Read that again, verse three. Second Chronicles chapter twenty-two, verse three. Mm -hmm. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. So his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. Now watch this. Remember, at uh, Ahaziah, he walked in the ways of the house of Ahab. You understand? His mother was his counselor. So Ahab, I mean, Ahaziah was 42 years old and his mother was his counselor. So his mother was the king. She was ruling through him. A 42-year-old man, his mother was the one that was ruling through him. Watch this. So Ahaziah was a mama's baby. A 42-year-old, he was, his mother was his counselor. Watch this. Now, let's go to 1 Kings 21. 1 Kings 21, verse 3. 1 Kings 21, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid it. Hold the on. The Lord forbid you know what? it. Me. Wait, wait, wait. Give me Isaiah 3 and 12. We're coming back here. Isaiah 3, verse 12. So, Athaliah was Ahaziah's counselor. We never done things like that in, in Israel, but this wicked Negro right here, that's what he was doing. Watch this, Isaiah 3 verse 12. Because this mama's boy right here, his mother is the one that's ruling through him. You understand? So we are a woman king in Israel at this point. You understand? Watch this, Isaiah 3 verse 12. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Read. As for my people, Children are the oppressors, mm -hmm. and women rule over them. So now, guess what? What we're reading in the book of Isaiah, right? Women were ruling over the men. That's the same thing that was happening during the time of Athaliah, because that was the time of Jezebel. The spirit of Jezebel was running rampant in Israel at this time. You understand? Read that again, verse 12. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 12. Mm -hmm. As for my people, children are the oppressors, really? and women rule over them. And women rule over them. So Athaliah was ruling over Israel through his son Ahaziah, the 42-year-old. Go ahead. O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err. They cause and you to sin. They cause you to sin. You understand? So that you forget your role because the roles are reversed now. Read. And destroy the way of thy paths. The way you think, the way you walk, your honor is gone because she owns it. You understand? This what Isaiah is prophesying about is what will happen to us in the last days. But guess what? It was going on in Israel during that time of Athaliah and Ahaziah. During the time of Ahab and the lineage of Ahab, the same thing was going on during that time. So guess what? During the time of the kings, Ahab and Jezebel is today. To the, the black men of today, that's where we at. The black women of today, Jezebel and Ahab. That's where we at now in history in these last days. Okay? Give me 2nd Ezra 5 and 8. 2nd Ezra chapter 5 is 8. Because what Isaiah is explaining here is the same thing that Ezra is saying. So Ezra is, is, is basically saying things that Isaiah said, but he's saying it in a different way. So what Isaiah is saying, with he, the women will rule over the men. You understand? Watch this. Read that. Isaiah chapter 5, 2nd Ezra oh. chapter 5 is 8. Come on. There shall be a confusion also in many places. The first confusion is women ruling over the men. That's the first confusion because God is not the author of confusion. The most high God of heaven and earth, the God of Israel, is about order. Right here, what Ezra is explaining is the confusion we are. The confusion he's talking about is what we're reading in Isaiah 3 and 12. Go ahead. Roll reversals. Come on. And the fire shall be oft sent out again. That fire that will be sent, well, that will, oft, that will be sent off again is the same fire that happened during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. Everything was out of order. The Lord sent fire. 
Yeah, give me that in Genesis 1924 real quick. It's not part of my notes, so let's just get it. Genesis 19 verse 24. Let's get there. Genesis chapter 19 verse 24. Go ahead. Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. You see that? Come, keep going. Verse 25. And he overthrew those cities and all the plain and all the inhabitants of the cities and all that which grew upon the ground. So now the Lord rained, it, it, it rained fire and brimstone during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah because of what the evils they was doing. Rory vessels, changing of sex and all of that. That is what was going on during the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's the same thing going on today in the new Sodom and Gomorrah, Babylon the Great, the United States of America. Let's go back. Second Ezra 5 is 8. Second Ezra chapter 5 is 8. Read. There shall be confusion also in many places. Mm -hmm. And the fire shall be oft sent out again. And the wild beasts shall, shall change their places. Mm. And mistress women shall bring forth monsters. So now the key you want out of that is says, and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. Because Ahab was a monster, but you couldn't see it because he, he, was, he was a monster in terms of, he was a big bundle of emotions. You understand? That's why today you see our brothers, many of our brothers, they are in jail. And you have to investigate, how did you end up here? You'll always find one common denominator, the Jezebel woman. The Jezebel woman, whether it's their mother, whether it's their sister, whether it's their girlfriend or the wife. You will always have common, you know, the common denominator number of the times is because there was a Jezebel woman involved in the midst. And Jezebel, he activated that wicked simple Negro in him to do the things that he did to end up in jail. You understand? So those are the monsters, the thugs, the gang members, the rapists, you understand? The murderers, the thieves, they're, all of that. Those are the monsters that these black women are raising. Why? Because they don't want men to check these boys. They want to be the ones that are doing it. They raise them up to be emotional, to be a big bundle of emotions. So that why? So that they can control them. So these men, they become emotionally and physically dependent on their mother. So when they meet a woman, they become emotionally and physically dependent on this woman. And they like it so. You understand? So... These menstruous women, unclean women, and sober women, is that shall bring forth monsters. That's what Isaiah is explaining, and destroy the way of their paths. That's what he's going into. The, for your, your path of being a man, you understand? The path to manhood, they're going to destroy that. They cut off your balls, then you're done. You understand? That's what Athaliah was doing with Ahaziah. So guess what? These women, they raise up they raise up these boys, right? To be physically and emotionally dependent on the woman. And then they, when they grow up, those are the same men that these Jezebel women get married to. So they can control them. So the mother raises them up and the other women, the other Jezebel women pick them up to become their husbands. Then the cycles just keep going. You understand? Now, first Kings. Give me first Kings now, 21 verse 3. First Kings of 21 verse 3. Mm -hmm. And Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. Look at the mindset of Ahab. He's a child. You ever seen a child when they are playing outside and another boy does not want to give him his toy? Where does he go? He runs to his mother. So his mother can come and interfere with the children play. That's what Ahab was doing with Nabath. You understand? She, he ran to Ahab, his mother, and his wife at the same time. Because his wife was actually his mother. Spiritual. You understand? Read that again, verse 3. First Kings chapter 21, verse 3. Mm -hmm. And Nabath said to Ahab, The Lord forbid me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. 
Come on. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased he is because of the word. Hold on. He is emotional. Ahab came to his wife heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. Instead of, give me that in Proverbs real quick. Instead of dealing with that brother, you understand? He did not want to do that. He ran to his mother. Okay? Give me that in Proverbs 25 verse 9. Proverbs 25 verse 9. The thought of foolishness is sin. No, no. Proverbs 25, not 24. 25 verse, verse 9. Proverbs 25 verse 9. Mm -hmm. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself mm -hmm. and discover not a secret to another. You see that is a debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. Ahab didn't want to do that. Ahab did not want to do that thing. That's why he came and ran his mouth to his, his mother, Jezebel which is his wife, but Jezebel was a mother to Ahab. You understand? She was, Jezebel, Ahab was like, Ahab was like Jezebel's son. Because that's how Jezebel treated his husband, her husband, Ahab. You understand? Go back to 1 Kings 21. 1 Kings 21 verse 4. 1 Kings 21 verse 4. Mm -hmm. And Ahab came into his house heavy and displeased because of the word which Naboth the Jezreelite had spoken to him. Read. For he had said, I will not give thee the inheritance of my fathers. Mm. And he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would eat no bread. You see that thing? This is an emotional wimp. He is a big bundle of emotions. You understand? It says, he, and he says what? It says, and he laid him down upon his bed. He went, he ran to the, to, to the bedroom and turned away his face. You ever seen the women? Now I'm going to talk to the women now. Seeing the women that when they're upset, they'll be turning around. They don't want you to talk to them. Some evil stuff. So you see it on the movies. You see it. Okay. Sometimes the woman will be saying, no, no, you are sleeping on the couch. Who does that? A simp will allow that thing to go down. So here what we're reading, it says, and he laid him down upon his bed and turned away his face and would not eat, eat, and would eat no bread. Now I don't want, even want to eat. I lost my appetite. Simp, 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 simp. Activity. Okay? Read. Verse 5. But Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, why is thy spirit so sad mm. that thou eatest no bread? You see that thing right there? Isn't that the same thing that mothers do to their sons? How they deal with their sons? Jezebel came said, but Jezebel, his wife, came to him and said unto him, Why is thy spirit so sad that thou eatest no bread? So now Jezebel has to cuddle him, you understand, to convince him that you must eat. Come on, little, no, 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 no. Here's some bread. Yeah, you see, here you go. You see, that's a big boy right there. Big boy. And be brushing his head. She be brushing his head. Big boy. No, 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 no. Big boy right there. That's exactly what Jezebel was doing to Ahab. And Ahab liked that thing. He loved it. Because Jezebel was like his mother. You understand? Now, jump down to verse 7. Verse 7. Mm -hmm. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Now watch this. You see what Jezebel is doing? She's activating Ahab now. Do you not govern the, the, the do you not govern the kingdom of Israel? Why would Jezebel have to say that? I mean, think about it. Why would Jezebel have to remind Ahab? Because Ahab wasn't ruling when, Je when Ahab wasn't ruling, Jezebel was. Je Jezebel was the, was the king during the time of Ahab and Ahab was the queen. So what's happening here is that that's why Jezebel had to remind Ahab 
that do you not govern the kingdom of Israel? Because he did not. She did. Keep going. Does thou now, does thou, does oh. thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Come on. Does thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Mm -hmm. Arise and eat bread and let thine hearts be merry. Meaning what? Fix your face. You understand? Be happy. Don't worry about it. I got this. Go ahead. I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite. I got this thing. Don't worry about it. I got this. I'm going to handle this thing. This is what Jezebel is telling Ahab. Because why? Jezebel has been running the show from the time Ahab was the king. So when she's saying, do you not govern? Because that's what he's going into when he says, does thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? She's asking him, are you not the ruler of Israel? You're the king. But she was the king. He was the queen. Okay. So now you see what Jezebel, Jezebel knew how to flatter Ahab. You understand? She knew how to pump him up. Why did she need to pump him up? If, if Ahab knew he was the king, why does he need to be pumped up that he's the king? He's the king. But Jezebel had to do it because Ahab didn't believe that he was ruling. She was running the show and, Je and Ahab knew that. Ahab knew that thing. That's why today you see all these celebrities, these rappers and all that, whenever they get a, 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 an award, they always mention their mothers. They never mention the pups. Fa the father's never mentioned. It's always the mother. I thank my mom and all of that. Because what? That's Ahab right there. The Jezebel mother is the one that's ruling over him. His mother is his counselor. Okay? Watch this. Give me... Give me 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 25. Because what's happening here is Jezebel is activating, is pumping, is, is enticing and flattering Ahab with her, with her words. You understand? Verse 25 now. Watch this. 1 Kings chapter 21 verse 25. Mm -hmm. But there was none like unto Ahab. Stop right there. With... The, hold on. There was none like unto Ahab. Meaning Ahab was special. He was a special kind of simp. He wasn't a regular simp. No, no, no. He took the word simp to a whole new level. He was a special kind of simp. That means simp activity was rampant in Ahab's house. That's why the Lord has to mention it here. Read that again. First Kings 21 verse 25. Mm -hmm. But there was none like unto Ahab. Right. Which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord. Read. Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. So the evil that the wickedness that, Je that Ahab was doing was because Jezebel was the one that was stirring him up. So that's the same thing today. With our brothers in the jail, our brothers that have done evil things because the women behind them was the one that was what was stirring them up to do those evils. Read that again. First Kings chapter 21, verse 25. Mm -hmm. But there was none like unto Ahab, which did sell himself to work wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel his wife stirred up. So now what, what we read, go back to second, go back to Second Chronicles 22, verse 4. Second Chronicles chapter 22, verse 4. Second Chronicles chapter 22, verse 4. Go ahead. Wherefore. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, no, like no. the house of. Ah, uh, read verse three. I'm sorry, read verse three. Second Chronicles chapter twenty-two, verse three. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, mm. for his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. So his mother was his counselor to do wickedly. So what I want to show you, because this is now after. This is afterwards now. This is the seed that comes out of Ahab. So that seed that is coming out of Ahab, what do you think going to come out? I mean, you can't plant an orange and an apple comes out. No. You will not plant a failure. Uh, uh, you will not plant an, a, a pomegranate and a banana pops out. 
That's, that doesn't happen. So Ahab, the seed of Ahab, it was a family of simps. You understand? And the women in Ahab's lineage, they were what? They were dragons. They were running the house. And everybody understood that. That's why here Ahaziah didn't, he didn't pop up and say, but you know what? We need to find counselors in Israel, the men. He didn't have that thought. A 42-year-old. He didn't have that thought. You understand? Because I hear, I hear a lot, I, I hear a lot of our sisters, you know, they say that a lot, especially these single women, the single black women that have kids and they've got boys. You hear all the time they say, yeah, he's the man of the house. A boy, she's that's a son. She's, she'll be saying, no, he's the man of the house. You know, my son is very overprotective. My son, uh, I'll be asking my son if I should uh, get a boyfriend and all of that and how he feels about it. He's very overprotective. But yet, he's, she is the mother to this child. You understand that? So, yes, she's, he, so the boy is playing two roles. One, he's playing, he's the son. Secondly, he's the man of the house. So what is she doing? She's breeding a simp, you understand? Because this boy is going to be dependent on a woman that he's going to deal with. Secondly, he, he is the man of the house, but yet he has no powers. So that's what these black women say all the time. Oh, my, my son, how old is your son? No, my son is 15. My son is 20. He is the man of the house. He's very overprotective and all of that. But he doesn't have powers. She tells him what to do. She clothes him. She cooks for him and all of that. But she's the man of the house. At the same time, he has to what? To make sure that he's happy. She has to make sure that he's happy when she's meeting a new man and so forth. That's the, that's the story of the single parent household. That's what happens. You understand? So this woman, she's raising Ahaziah and she's raising Ahab in the same house with the same boy. Could you imagine that? That's what she's raising. She's raising Ahab and she's raising Ahaziah at the same time. That's why a lot of the times you see um, the son meets a woman and the mother says, no, I want to see that woman. And guess what? When she meets the woman, they get along. And she tells this woman how to deal with her son. What do you got? You've got Ahab. You understand? You've got Ahab one. At the same time, you've got Ahaziah at the same time. Two beds with one stone. You can't make this stuff up. Watch this. Give me Give me the book of 2 Kings, chapter 9. 2 Kings 9, verse 22. Now, this is when Jehu was going to do a killing spree. You understand? 2 Kings, chapter 9, verse 22. Let's read that. 2 Kings, chapter 9, verse 22. Go ahead. But of the children of Israel, did Solomon make no bondmen? Wait, wait. No, 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 no. 2 Kings, chapter 9. Verse 22. Come on, stay with me. Second Kings chapter 9, verse 22. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass when Joram saw Jehu that he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace, so long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and, witch and her witchcraft are so many? You see, Jehu was coming to kill Joram. You understand? He said, listen. So now Joram is asking, are you coming? Are we, is it peace that you are coming here? He says, what peace? So long as the whoredoms of thy mother Jezebel and her witchcrafts are so many, meaning what? I'm coming for the kill. Because Jezebel, she was playing the whore. You understand? Jezebel was a spiritual whore. Jezebel. You understand? It says what? And her witchcrafts are so many. What was the witchcraft? Having men under her spell. Because Jezebel had many followers. She had 400 men that ate at her table. 
So Jezebel had a lot of followers. You understand? Watch this. Now, I'm gonna let's move on now. I'm gonna deal with the next one. The next, the next piece. You see, Jezebels, they always look for that brother that has a hero complex. Let me say that again. Jezebels are always looking for those brothers that have a hero complex. What do I mean by that? Brothers that always want to save the woman. It doesn't matter how, how, what a demon she is. It doesn't matter. He, he believes that in his mind, he can fix this woman. That's what he believes in his mind. The Ahab, that's the Ahab personality. He thinks he can fix this hope. That's his mindset. With all the red flags, with all the cancels, he's still going for him. Because he's got a hero complex. Jezebel look for that type of brother. You understand? Watch this. Give me wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 24. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 24. Watch this. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 14, verse 24. Mm -hmm. They kept neither lives nor marriages any longer undefiled. Meaning what? The marriages were no longer were no longer undefiled. Now the marriages are defiled now because the roles are reversed. The man is the woman, the woman is the man. You understand? Woman is in the front, the man is on the is taking the back seat, he's confused, holding a woman's hand back with his balls in that purse. Keep going. But either one slew another treacherously mm -hmm. or grieved him by adultery. Or grieved him by adultery, spiritual fornication. That's what Jezebel was doing. You understand? Jump down to verse 26. Watch this. Verse 26. Mm -hmm. Disquieting of good men. What? Disquieting of good men. Disquieting of good men. Hmm. Keep going. Forgetfulness of good turns. Defiling of souls. Changing of kind. Disorder in marriages, adultery, and shameless uncleanness. Read that again, verse 26. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 26. Disquieting of good men, forgetfulness of good turns. Stop right there. It says disquieting of good men, disquieting of good men. The word disquiet, disquiet is, is called perturb, agitate, upset, disturb decompose so this quieting of good men you are disturbing the order of good men that's what this that's what jezebel does because remember she's hunting for that for that hero brother the brother that always wants to be the hero he's got a hero complex jezebel looks for that brother right there because remember this brother samson had the same they had the same spirit samson had, had samson had that hero complex but he was well, the thing that he was not aware of is that Jezebel didn't care about that. Jezebel only cared. Delilah, that's the spirit of Jezebel, she only cared about his mind. If I can get hold of his mind and have full control of it, the rest is by default. I don't have to do nothing. You understand? So that's what Jezebel looks for, to disquiet good men. Okay, come on. Disquieting of, of good men Mm -hmm. Forgetfulness of good turns. Forgetfulness of good turns. Read. Defiling of souls. Because she's going to defile your mind. By her what? By her philosophy. What is a philosophy? Role reversals. Come on. Changing of kind. Changing of kind. Meaning what? Uh, physically, the sex didn't change, but spiritually did. You understand? Once the, the, it says the changing of kind, this goes to sex changes, but also spiritually, it goes into that so role reversals. Once the roles are reversed, this is what happens to the marriage. Next, next part of the verse, come on. Changing of kind, disorder in marriages. That's it right there. Disorder in marriages. Because once the, 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 the roles are reversed, then the marriage is in disarray. There's disorder in that marriage. Man is playing the role of the woman. The woman is playing the role of the man. The woman is the leader. 
and then the, the man submits to the man. The man submits to the woman. That's the, that right there, that's the, that's the business, that's the business model of a whorish woman. That right there, that's the business model of a whorish woman. That's the business model of Jezebel. That's Jezebel's business model. Because Jezebel has a business model. We're reading about it right now. Read that again, verse 26. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Disquieting of good men. Pray. Forgetfulness of good turns. Come on. Defiling of souls. Mm. Changing of kind. Pray. Disorder in marriages. Come on. Adultery and shameless uncleanness. Adultery. Because once the roles are reversed, that what is that called? Spiritual fornication. You understand? Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon 14. Wisdom of Solomon 14 verse 12. Let's read that. Because that's what happened to Adam and Eve in the garden. There was role reversal. When Eve now was coming to teach Adam, when she brought the philosophy that she learned from the serpent, the roles were reversed. Because at first, Adam's job was to teach Eve. But in Genesis 3, Eve now is teaching Arab role reversals. Okay, read that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 12. For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. Come on. And the invention of them, the corruption of life. You see that? So the devising of idols, who's the idol now that is being worshipped? The woman. Because Jezebel, she knows that if she gets this brother that wants to be the hero, he's got a hero complex. She knows that whatever, whatever, whatever Jezebel asks for, he's going to do it because the things that he's, he's looking for, he's fishing for compliments because he's got a low self-esteem. Jezebel is looking for that type of brother. You understand? Because she's going to be the idol because she's going to be the one that's worshipped. The men will depend on Jezebel's compliments. You understand? Now go back to Wisdom of Solomon 14, verse 26 again. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, verse 26. Read. Disquieting of good men. Mm -hmm. Forgetfulness of good turns. Come on. Defiling of souls. Mm -hmm. Changing of kind. Disorder in marriages. Adultery and shameless uncleanness. That adultery goes into spiritual fornication because the roles are reversed and shameless uncleanness. The uncleanness goes into what? It goes into the way the mind works, the way they think now, because now the woman thinks like a man, the man thinks like a woman. That's exactly what Steve Harvey, he wrote the book, Think Like a Man, Act Like a Lady, something like that. Think Like a Man, Act Like a Woman. That type of a thing. What do you think that book is about? Role reversals. And guess what? The women, it was a bestseller because women are the ones that bought that book. The women. They are the ones that bought that garbage. They bought it. Okay? Watch this. Now, give me the book of First Esdras 4 verse 22. First Esdras chapter 4 verse 22. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 22. Come on. By this also you must know that women have dominion over you. Do ye not labor in toil and give and bring all to the women? You see that thing? That's the hero right there. So don't miss, don't misunderstand. This is not talking about, this is not saying don't take care of your family because you don't be simple as hell. This goes into what? It goes into you divulge all your, all your investments. You know, I've got a business here. I've got this. I've got that. That's what you are doing in actual fact. You understand? So now when you do that, she has dominion over you now. It says, do you not labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman? Because you love to be the hero. You have that hero complex. You understand? You have the, if you have a hero complex, you know who I'm talking about. You know who you are. If you have a hero complex, you fit this thing right here. You understand? It says you labor and toil and give and bring all to the woman. Watch this. Next verse. Keep going. 
verse 23. Yea, mm -hmm. a man taketh his sword and goeth his way to rob and to steal and to, si to sail upon, upon the sea and upon rivers. So he will do this stuff. He will, he will go through all this trouble to do what? To look like Superman. You understand? But what you don't realize is that in his mind, he thinks all these things that he's getting, these are the things that uh, Jezebel loves. No, 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 no. Jezebel doesn't love that. Jezebel loves, go back to Judges 16. Let me show you what Jezebel loves. Those things, they just come with the package. But that's not, those are not things that Jezebel holds dear. I'll show you what Jezebel holds dear. Watch this. Judges chapter 16. Judges chapter 16 and verse 15. Read that. Judges chapter 16, verse 15. Go ahead. And she said unto him, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. So now that goes into, but you are playing with me. Ah, you don't really love me, but because you don't want to share. I don't know who you are. You don't want to tell me about yourself. You know, that's what women, they be asking. Why do you think they're asking for that? You know, it doesn't share how he feels and all of that. Guess what? They are, that's what Delilah was doing. Delilah was doing that thing. You understand? So guess what? That's what, that's the mindset of Jezebel. That's the mindset of Delilah right there. Because they are looking for, this is what's most precious to them, your mind. Once they have control of it, guess what? They don't have to tell you to do these things. You're going to do it. Go back to 1 Esdras 4, verse 23. You don't have to do all of these things that Zerubbabel is mentioning here. You're going to do them anyway. Because your mind, guess what, is remote controlled by her. She has full control over your mind. You don't have to do all these things. You're going to do them willingly. You understand? And you will believe that you are the one that's doing it. No. She's the one that's doing it, but she's making you believe that you are doing it out of your own accord. That's power right there. Read that thing. First Ezra 4, verse 23. Start. Read verse 22 again. First Ezra chapter 4, verse 22. By this also you must know that mm. women have dominion over you. Do ye not labor and toil and give and bring all to the women. You see that part right there? It says, this also you must know that women have dominion over you. Power. So or everything else, you don't have, that's why you see a lot of these rich men, why do you think they, they cheat on their wives? Why do you think they do that? Because the wife has full control over his mind. So now he has to feel that he's in control somewhere. Guess where he goes? He's going to deal with all these uh, miguanchi that he meets. Go to Spoton, go to Chisanyama, Yanis Gobu Santin, go to restaurant because they are still young. They don't know nothing. So now he has to be at a place where he feels some type of control. That's why he will deal with these young girls. Why? Because all they want, they just like to have a good time. You understand? So that he, he's got control over that. Because he knows that he's been controlled somewhere else. You understand? That's what they do. Read verse 23 now. Come on. Verse 23. Mm -hmm. Yea, a man taketh his sword and goeth his way to rob and to steal, Wait. to sail upon the sea and upon rivers. Mm. You see what? He will go through all this trouble all for the woman. You understand? He will go through all this trouble all for the woman. It says, and he bringeth, what? It says, keep, read the next verse. Read verse 24. Verse 24. Mm -hmm. And looketh upon a lion and goeth in the darkness. Mm -hmm. And when he had stolen, spoiled, and robbed, he bringeth it to his love. You see that part right there? So he will face a lion He'll go into the, into, into the darkness and when he has stolen, spoiled and robbed, he bringeth it to his love. He bring all of these things to the woman. You understand? He doesn't care about himself because he's got a hero complex. You simple as hell. 
Some of you brothers, you have that spirit right here. You have it. And I've counseled you, I've counseled you some of you about the spirit, but you still, wanna, you, still, you still don't want to let it go. You're still holding on to that simp spirit. You're still holding on to it. You're playing the hero. Mm -hmm. Okay. Give me that in Proverbs 6, verse 26. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 26. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 26. Go ahead. For by means of a horse woman, mm. a man is brought to a piece of bread. Now that's it. And the read. Whoa, 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 whoa. Read that thing again. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 26. Read. For by means of a horse woman, mm. a man is brought to a piece of bread. By means of a horish woman, a man is brought to a piece of bread. Keep going. Watch this. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. The adulteress will hunt for the precious. She will hunt. So the because does she just find the precious life sitting there by itself? No. She has to hunt for the man that will provide this precious life. In order for this man to submit to her will, she has to have full control over his mind so that he can yield to her will. Then she will get access to that precious life. You men understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Read that again. Verse 26. Proverbs 6, verse 26. Go ahead. For by means of a horish woman, mm. a man is brought to a piece of bread. A man is brought to a a man is brought to a piece of bread, read. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Because guess what? In order for her to get this precious life, guess what? She has to bring you to a piece of bread. Meaning, what? she has to bring you to nothing. But in order for her to bring you to nothing, she has to get access to your mind. She has to control your spirit because, and when she controls your spirit, that means you've given your soul to this woman and now she's walking all over you. You understand? And that precious life that she's looking for, now she's going to get it by default because she has control over you. Now, let me share some pictures, okay? Watch this. Um, so we can understand what it means when it says he's brought to a piece of bread. Let's see. Mm. Watch this. Can you see my screen? Look at that thing. Yes, sir. <laughs> that right there. You, you see this thing? Read that verse again. First is you can't make this chapter stuff four. Up. You, you can't make this stuff up. Just look at the picture. Read the script. Come on. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 26. Go ahead. For by means of a horse woman, mm. a man is brought to a piece of bread. Read. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. You see, that's you. He says, before being a before, before being a drill sergeant, after a drill sergeant. So this is you right here. On the left, you see you are single. Jezebel is looking at you because you are fresh and all that. Guess what? The objective when she's done with you. You're going to look like this chicken on the right. You see what this chicken looks like? That's a piece of bread right there. Look at that. This is what Jezebel wants to do to your spirit. This is what Jezebel wants to do to your spirit. Now, let's look at the next picture. Look at that thing right there. That's you right there. Look at that. Before and after. Because when Jezebel is looking at you, she's seeing this chicken on the left. You understand? After, you see what you look like? You brother see that? Look at that thing right there. Yes, <laughs> that chicken on the right. Now you are brought to a, pea, a piece of bread. Hmm? The whole chicken looks like a thigh. The whole chicken on the right. It just looks like a thigh. Let's look at the next picture. Now, watch this. Now, you see the single woman? You see what she looks like? Because she has to destroy you because she's hunting for the precious life. The single woman on the left, top left. Now, look, look what happens when she gets you, the simp. You see how she becomes? Heavy stuff. 
Mm-hmm. Now, he, now she's she's living the life. You look what you are. You are seeing it. Look on the right. You see bottom right. Look at that thing. This is the woman before she l- letting you know who's the prize. You the prize. Because you see what she looks like when she's single? Look at how you look like when you're single. Look what happens after you are married. You see what she looks like? Look what you look like. Read the verse again. Verse 26. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 26. Go ahead. For by means of a Jewish woman, a mm. man is brought to a piece of bread. Right. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life. Once she got the precious life, this is what she looks like, top right. She looks like that now that she, when she finds that precious life, she's going to look like this. Guess what? When she finds the precious life, you're going to look like the one on the bottom line, on the bottom right right there. You look like this now. This is the, that's, that's exact, spiritually, you're going to look like this. You see that? Spiritually, that's what you look like. Look at that thing. Just look at that. Hmm. Okay, keep going. Verse 27. Mm. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes be not burned? You see what the Bible is saying? Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes not be burned? Of course your clothes are going to be burned. You take fire, you're going to get burned. That's what the Lord is saying right there. You understand? Watch this. Give me that in Sirach. I think it's Ecclesiasticus. Let me see. I think it's in the 20s somewhere there. Mm. Sirach 21 verse 2. Read that. Ecclesiasticus 21 verse 2. Come on. Flee from sin as mm-hmm. from the face of the serpent. You see what the Lord is saying? Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent. As though you are running up from a poisonous snake. Read. For if thou comest too near it, mm-hmm. it will bite thee. It's going to bite you. Read. The teeth thereof mm-hmm. are as the teeth of a lion. Go ahead. Slaying the souls of men. You see that thing? That's what Jezebel does. Her job is to slay the souls of men. That's what she's looking for. Your soul. She's after your soul. Because how she's going to slay your soul? She's going to slay your soul because you give your soul unto her. Like it says in Sirach 9. You give your soul unto this woman and that's what she's going to do to your soul. It says slaying the souls of men. You see what she's doing? When she's hunting for that precious life? So if you have that hero complex, that's exactly what she's going to do to you. Let's go back. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 27. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 27. Mm-hmm. Can a man take fire in his bosom and his clothes be not burned? Right. Can one go upon hot coals and his feet be not burned? No. You are going to get burned. You play with fire. That's exactly what's going to happen to you. You're going to get burned. That's what the Lord is teaching us here. But some of you brothers, you have such a low self-esteem because the sister is smiling at you or towards you or next to you. All of a sudden, you think the sister has, she likes you. And then guess what? Jezebel knows that. She hunts for that type of brother. You understand? And she's going to destroy your soul. Understand that thing. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 26. Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 26. Mm -hmm. And I find more bitter than death the woman Mm. whose heart is snares and nets and her hands as bands. Meaning her job is to what? To ensnare you and to what? To trap you up. And guess what? Now, you are your mind is held prisoner by her. Read. Whoso pleaseth God shall escape from her. So if you want to please, if you want to please the Lord, you are going to escape from this type of woman right here. It says her heart is snares, her mind 
she's going to snare your soul. A net. What is a net used for? To catch. You understand? To catch prey. So her mind is a snare. You're going to fall in. And the net, which is her mind, is going to trap you up. And her hands has banned. Now she's got you. She's got you. Prisoner. You understand? Read. But the sinner shall be taken by her. But the sinner shall be taken by this woman. You understand? The sinner, but the simp will be taken by this woman. The simp will be taken by this woman right here. Okay, watch this. Now, I'm going to move on from there. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, the fourth characteristics that Jezebel is hunting for, she's looking for beta males. Jezebel looks for a beta, beta male. Hmm, let's get the definition of a beta male. Watch this. Jezebel is always looking for that beta male, that low, low self-esteem brother. Okay? A beta male. The one that does not have masculine energy. He's looking for that brother. Let's read the definition of beta male. Read that. The definition of beta male. Urban mm -hmm. Dictionary. Come on. A beta male is a man who lacks masculine energy mm. and adopts feminine characteristics. Stop right there. It says he lacks masculine energy and adopts feminine characteristics. Jezebel looks for this brother, right? This type of brother, Jezebel is looking for that type of brother. Yeah, I've seen it. Mm. I've seen it in the camp, by the way. Don't get it twisted. I've seen this thing right here. Read again. The definition of beta male. Mm -hmm. A beta male is a man who lacks masculine energy and adopts feminine characteristics. And they, uh, that brother, he, he's got feminine characteristics. Keep going. Often faces problems or confrontations passive aggressively. You see that? That's how they, that's how they behave. It says they face problems... Um, the way they deal with problems is what? Passive aggressively. They have a passive aggressive uh, personality. They are passive aggressive. I've seen this thing in the camp. I've seen it. Passive aggressive. That's a beta male right there. You understand? Keep going. A beta male is often taken advantage due to his nice guy persona. Read that again. A beta male is what? A beta male is often taken advantage due to his nice guy persona. You see, because the beta male is, is the brother that has that hero complex. He, this brother has a hero complex. So the, the, the Jezebel, she knows, oh, that's the, I want that brother. That brother, sister? Yes, I want that brother. But I still want him. Hold on. Wait, what? Yes. Well, hold on. You still want that brother? Mm -hmm. Yes. Because that's what Jezebel looks for. Because me, I'll ask you a couple of times if to make sure that I heard you right. You still want that brother? Yes, I still want that brother. Okay, I understand now. Read that thing again. The definition of beta male. A no, no, beta no, I'm male. Sorry. Wait, 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 wait. I clicked on the link. Read that again. A beta male is a man who likes masculine energy. And mm. adopts feminine characteristics. Come on. Often faces problems or confrontations passive aggressively. Read. A beta male is often taken advantage due to his nice guy persona. Let's, let's get an example of that. Read that. Only a beta male apologizes to his wife after she cheats on him. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Yes, let's read the second definition. The definition of beta male. Someone who is unable to assert dominance mm. and is generally pathetic and not attractive. Now, that's heavy right there. And when they say attractive, they are not talking about your physical appearance. No, 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 no. Your behavior. Because you don't have that masculine energy. Is a someone who is unable to assert dominance and is generally pathetic and not attractive. 
Woo! That's some heavy stuff right there. Read that thing again. The definition of beta male. Someone who is unable to assert dominance and is generally pathetic and not attractive. They are generally pathetic, meaning what? They are a simp. Okay, they are a simp. That's what makes them less attractive. You understand? Let's get the, an example of that. Read, read the, the example next to it. OMG, look at space. He has so much potential, but he is such a beta male. You see that thing right there? He has so much potential, but he is such a beta male. Meaning what? He is such a simp. Hmm. Yes, let's read the beta male. Let's read the fourth definition. I want this one. The definition of beta male. Come on. An unremarkable, careful man who avoids risk and confrontation. They avoid risk and confrontation. Come on, because he's a wimp. Keep going. Beta males like the physical presence. They like the Charisma. physical presence. Hold on, wait, wait. Beta males lack the physical presence. Come on. Like the physical presence, charisma, and confidence of the alpha male. You see that thing right there? They lack the physical presence, charisma, and confidence of the alpha male. Hmm. Let's see if there's another one. Woo! I like this one better. Read the, the fifth definition. The definition of beta male. Uh -huh. A bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, brothers. Read that part again. The definition of beta male. Uh -huh. A bitch. Mm -hmm. We'll just use the oh, the beach. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. All praise to the most like God. All praise. Now, watch this. Give me Jeremiah 31 verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 22. Go ahead. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? Read. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. Mm -hmm. A woman shall compass a man. A woman shall compass a man, meaning a woman will rule over the man. And this man that is ruled over by this type of woman, that man is a beta male. You understand? That's a beta male right there. And beta males are very emotional. You understand? Very, very emotional. Watch this. Give me Isaiah 3 verse 12 again, because we read it earlier. Okay, Isaiah is explaining beta males right here. Okay? Who raises beta males? The black woman, the single black independent woman, they are the ones that are raising beta males. The same males that in the, when they grow older, they complain about. They say, no, you know, the black men, you know, they are this, they are that. But these are the same black males that you are raising up that you despise when they get older. Read what you got. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 12. Mm -hmm. As for my people, children are the oppressors mm. and women rule over them. Read. Oh, my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. So now these children that are, are it says, oh, for my, as for my children, are their oppressors because these are the monsters that Ezra is talking about that are raised by these menstruous women and women rule over them. So that's why every month is like they are on their menstrual as well because they are now, they, they, they have synchronized with the women that raised them. That's why every month you see a brother is emotional and all of that mm -hmm, because he's synchronized with some women at work or some women that raise him up or some women that he's fencing that he likes. He, he's, you have synchronized with her periods. You also, when she goes, you go too. Keep going. Okay, hold on. Wait, give me First Kings 21 verse 7. 
Let's go back to First Kings. I want to show you something with Ahab. Watch this. First Kings, chapter twenty-one, verse seven. First Kings, chapter twenty-one, verse seven. Come on. And Jezebel, his wife, said unto him, mm -hmm. "Dost thou now govern the kingdom of Israel? Arise and eat bread, mm. and let thine heart be merry." I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. So you see what Jezebel, she's the leader here. She leads Ahab. She's the alpha female. He says, I will give thee the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. I'm going to do it. You just sit there and eat bread. You see that thing? Meaning what? Here little, no, 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 no. Here's some Kellogg's. Mm -hmm. Here little, no, no. Here's that mommy. You see that mommy's favorite bread that she makes? You see mommy's favorite cake that she makes? You see here, that meal that you love so much. Mommy made you just like the way you like it. Mm -hmm. That's the mindset of Ahab. So what we're reading here, that's exactly what's going on. Watch this. Hmm. Keep going. Read verse 8. Let me show you how Jezebel takes over the situation. Read the next verse. Come on. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. Stop right there. And she Hold on. She wrote letters in Ahab's name. Because guess what? Jezebel, she likes men with power. And so that she can rule through them. That's the mindset of Jezebel. You understand? It says she wrote letters in Ahab's name. That's the mindset of Jezebel right there. You understand? Keep going. And sealed it with his zeal. Because the kings, when the king wrote letters, they had a seal. So that when they, you know, they, they, will, they will ban that rubber thing and all that, and they have a signet. And then they will put it in there, and then they will put it on the envelope. Then you'll see, okay, that's Ahab, king of Israel, and so forth. Yes, she did that. Keep going. Meaning what? Sealed meaning, it. Meaning, hold on. Meaning what? Ahab, she likes to drop names. Now, I'm going to back up a little bit. You ever notice? I'll give a brother an instruction, right? Okay, do such and such with brother so and so. So now, is the two of you or the three of you working on a project? Okay. Now, the brother will be dropping the, the, the name of leadership the whole time. You know why? Because you have the spirit of Ahab. All the time you just be dropping the leadership's name. The hell is this? Because, you know, deep down, these brothers don't respect you. Why? Because you have that spirit of Ahab. Yes. You have that spirit of Ahab. Mm -hmm. Spirit just jumped me on this thing. Read that thing again, verse 9, verse 8. First Kings of 21, verse 8. Go ahead. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name. Mm -hmm. and sealed them with his seal. Stop right there. So what was Jezebel doing? She was dropping names. That was the thing with Jezebel. She knew how to drop the names. She was name dropping. That's the, that spirit, right? That's the spirit of Jezebel. If you have that spirit, you have the spirit of Jezebel. Not the spirit of Ahab. No, the spirit of Jezebel. Guess what? Because Elisha 7, he had the same spirit also. Watch this. Give me that in 2 Kings. Gehazi. He had the same spirit also. You understand? Hmm. Watch this. Give me 2 Kings chapter 5 real quick. 2 Kings chapter 5 and verse... 2 Kings chapter 5 is 21 and 22. We're going to read those two. Because Gehazi, he followed Nehemiah. Watch this. Second Kings chapter 5, verse 21. Come on. So Gehazi followed after Naaman. Mm -hmm. And when Naaman saw, saw him running after him, he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said, Is all well? Is all well? So Naaman is asking Gehazi, Is everything good? Come on. And he said, All is well. Oh, My master good. had sent me saying, what, what did he say? My master had sent me 
my master, my master. Did Elisha send Gehazi after Nehemiah? No. No, he did not. But that's what he did. He dropped his master's name. He was doing name dropping. That's the spirit of Jezebel right there. The spirit of Jezebel. You see that thing right there? That's a simp. Now let's go back. First Kings 21. I just wanted to touch on that thing. First Kings 21. First Kings 21. Verse 8. First Kings chapter 21, verse 8. Read. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name and sealed mm -hmm. them with his seal and sent letters unto the elders and to the nobles that were in, this, in his city, dwelling with Naboth. Read. And she wrote in the letters saying, Proclaim me fast and set Naboth on high among the people. You see what she said? You see what, she, what she's doing? She's making it seem like it's a righteous thing that's going on. Let's proclaim a fast. That's what she's doing. She's name dropping and using Ahab's position to do, his, to do her will. Because this was not the will of Ahab. No, no, this was Jezebel's will. She wanted to do this. Because remember, Jezebel hated the men of the Lord. And she had 400 men that was eating at her table. She loved those ones because those were all simps. You understand? That means Jezebel had a congregation. You, you see that thing right there? That's why John the Revelator, he prophesied about that thing. The spirit of Jezebel. The church in Thyatira in Revelation 2 verse 20. Jezebel, those 400 men that was eating at Jezebel's table. Yes. Those right there, those are the men. Could you give me that in 1 Kings chapter 18? 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 19. Watch this. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 19. Come on. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel mm. and the prophets of Baal, 450, mm. and the prophets of the groves, 400, mm. which eat at Jezebel's table. So she had 850 men following behind her. 850 men. It says 450, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400. So he had 850 men that ate at Jezebel's table. So Jezebel had a congregation. Jezebel had a congregation. Now, nah. hmm. that's some heavy stuff right there, right? That's beautiful stuff right there. Because there's some brothers... I'm seeing the way you are moving, you brothers, some of you, not all of you, some of the brothers, they are moving with that spirit of Jezebel. And some brothers, they already have a God in front of them. Mm -hmm. Some brothers have already made other brothers in the camp, they follow them. Even when they go off, they are still following behind them. Yes, you have the spirit of Jezebel too. I'm watching you. You better get your mind right there. The, the feast of uh, the day of atonement is coming. You better repent from that thing. You understand? Because the same way Jezebel had a congregation, guess what? You are you by following that brother, you have a you are starting a congregation as well. Yes. That's a topic for another day. Okay, I'm gonna deal with that class. It's coming. I'm putting it together. Now let's go back. First Kings 21. First Kings 21. And verse, read verse 9 again. First Kings chapter 1, verse 9. Go ahead. And she wrote in the letter saying, Proclaim mm. me fast, and set Naboth on high among the people. Set Naboth on high among the people. You see what Jezebel was doing? Now, jump down to verse 15 now. Watch this. Verse 15. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass when Jezebel, and it came to pass when Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, mm. that Jezebel said to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Stop which right he there. Hold on. It's, uh, you see what Jezebel did? 
Just remember, now they said Naboth on high among the people, and Naboth was put to death. Now, verse 15, Jezebel, after she killed Naboth, because remember, she had 850 men following behind her. Those are the ones that did the beating, part of them, to kill Naboth. Now, Jezebel comes back to the, the simp and say, okay, now it's for you to, it's time for you to take, uh, to take Naboth's vineyard now. Take his, uh, um, take his land and his, the inheritance of his fathers. That's what Jezebel was doing because Jezebel was running the show. Now, what I want to show you, brothers, is that Jezebel controls the mind of men. She controls the minds of the simps. Jezebel, she can tell you, don't talk to that brother. Don't talk to that brother. That's, the, that's what Jezebel, Jezebel always wants to be in control. Jezebel is those type of women, when they find men sitting, she wants to be the one that she wants a voice to be heard on high. Why? Because in her mind, she's what? She's in control. That's the mind of Jezebel. Jezebel, whenever she finds men speaking, she wants to speak louder than them. That's Jezebel right there. You see it in the locations. We see it on a daily basis. Jezebel, just she's loud. She wants to make sure that the men, she finds men sitting, she will speak louder than them. That's the spirit of Jezebel. Because Jezebel hates men. She hates men because she doesn't want to submit herself to men. That's Jezebel. You understand? Watch this. Read verse 15 again. First Kings chapter 1 verse 15. Come on. And it, and it came to pass when mm. Jezebel heard that Naboth was stoned and was dead, that Jezebel said to both to Ahab, Arise, take possession of the vineyard of Naboth, the Jezreelite, which he refused to give thee for money. For Naboth is not alive, but dead. So do you think that Ahab didn't know about this? He was fully aware of what was Jezebel did. He was fully aware of what Jezebel was doing, but Ahab was a simp. And guess what? Jezebel likes men like this. And these men because they are fully buried in that, woman's, in that woman's box, you can't tell that brother nothing. You can't tell him nothing. You know, you can't, listen, you, it doesn't matter how many precepts you can bring out. They're not going to hear you. One year of the other. Okay, come on, next verse. Read. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, when Ahab heard that Naboth was dead, that Ahab rose up to go down to the vineyard of Naboth the Jezreelite, to take possession of it. Now, I want to show you something right, right here. What's going on here is that you have Ahab, you have Naboth. Then you've got Jezebel, right? Ahab went to Naboth to, so that he can get his vineyard because it was next to his. Naboth said no. Now, you have two men, they're having strife with one another, right? Now, Jezebel, Jezebel, the way Jezebel does things, Jezebel, she's the one that is going to fight the battle for the man. She fights the man's battle because the man is weak. So Jezebel is the one that goes out. She puts on pants spiritually and physically. She goes out there to defend the man because the man is a simp. Now, I'm going to give an example. Give me Deuteronomy 25 verse 11. Watch this. Because Moses, he explained this thing. I want to show you what Moses is explaining. The example of it is what we are reading in the book of First Kings with Ahab and Jezebel. And guess what? That's the type of brother that Jezebel looks for. Okay? Read that. Deuteronomy 25 verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 11. Mm -hmm. When men strive together, one with another. Hold on. And the wife... So when men strive together, one with another, what was going on? Ahab wanted Naboth's uh, vineyard. Naboth said no. So there's a dispute going on here. You understand? So that's what Moses is explaining. The example of it is what we read in 1 Kings. Read verse 11 again. Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 11. Read. When men strive together, one with another, mm -hmm. and the wife of the one draweth near for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smited him. Stop right there. And he says, hold on. And the wife of the, of the one draweth near for to deliver her husband 
out of the hand of him that smited him. What was Jeze what did Jezebel do? Jezebel went to deliver Ahab from Naboth. How did she do it? She had Naboth killed, and after she did it, she went and spoke to Ahab and said, well, now go and take possession of it. So this example right here is what Moses is explaining, is what we just read in 1 Kings. Keep going. And put it her forth her hand and take it him by the secrets. That's what Jezebel did to Ahab. That's what Jezebel, Jezebel did to Ahab. What did she do? Is it put it forth her hand and take it him by the secrets. So obviously Jezebel, she, what did she do? She already had um, Ahab's balls in her purse already. Now she wants to what? She wants to grab Nabab's balls too. You see, that's how Jezebel thinks. So guess what? When Jezebel is hunting you, guess what she wants? She wants your mind and she wants your balls too. Understand that. Give me that in Deuteronomy 23 verse 1 now. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 1. Mm -hmm. He that is wounded in the stones. Stop right there. Remember what we read in Deuteronomy 25. It says what? She taketh him by the secrets. Meaning what? By his ball, by his balls. You understand? She took, she already had Ahab's balls in her purse. We are reading Ahab now's account here. Because here in Deuteronomy 23 verse 1, this is the example of Ahab. Deuteronomy 25 verse 11, she now wants to extend the hand and grab Naboth's balls too. To rescue Ahab. You understand? Read that again. Deuteronomy 23 verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 23 verse 1. Go ahead. He that is wounded in the stones mm. or hath his privy member cut off Come on. shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. The Lord can use you. You understand? Because this is spiritual now. This is spiritual at this point. It says, it says you are wounded in the stones because what happened to your stones? Your, what, your privy member has been cut off. Who did that? Jezebel did that. So when Jezebel is looking at you, you are physically strong. There's only one thing. There's only two things on Jezebel's mind. Your mind and your balls, your privy member. She wants to cut it off and put it in her purse and make you carry the bag when you're moving around to the malls. That's the mindset of Jezebel. Understand that thing. Okay. Hmm. This is some heavy stuff right here. You see, this Bible is a true book. Go back to Deuteronomy 25, verse 11. Deuteronomy chapter 25, verse 11. When men strive together, one with another, mm -hmm. and the wife of the one draweth near for to deliver her husband out of the hand of him that smiteth him, and putteth forth her hand and taketh him by the secrets. You see that thing? She will grab you by the grab you by the secret. And that's what Jezebel did to Ahab. And the 850 men that ate at Jezebel's table, she had all their balls in her purse. And all of these men, I'm, I'm going to just picture this. All these 850 men, Jezebel, she cut their balls off. And she put their stones in their purses that she made them carry. And in order for them to get their, their stones back, even though they are carrying their bags with their stones in it, they had to go to Jezebel for it. Hmm. That's some heavy stuff, right? Guess what that translates into? That translates into you having to beg your wife for sex. Guess what? She's got your stones and she's making you carry the bag with those stones in them. You still have to ask her, and beg her for that and she will say give me the bag on your on your shoulder and she'll take the stones out and put them back so you can use them for that moment and she'll take them back mm. watch this the reason why she is able to get access to all these things is because of this micah 7 verse 5 let's go back there Micah, chapter 7, verse 5. Go ahead. Trust ye not in a friend. Mm. 
put you not confident in a guide. Ray, oh, keep the wait, dose of wait. them. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. Actually, you know what? Hmm. Is a trusty not in a friend, right? Put you not confident in a guide. So who's guiding you? Your wife. Your wife is the one that's doing it. It says, trust you not in a friend. Because remember, if you read Sarah 6 and 7, it says, if thou wouldest get a friend, prove them first and be not hasty to credit them. Let's get that. Sarah 6 and 7. Let's read it so I don't paraphrase it. Let's get that real quick. Hmm. All praises to the most high. Give me that thing for me. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 or 7. Go ahead. If thou wouldest get a friend, mm. prove him first. Come on. And be not hasty to credit him. Don't be hasty to credit him. But because a simp will not, the simp is hasty. A simp is always moving with the spirit of haste. Why? Because your wife is your counselor. Go back to Micah 7 verse 5. Micah chapter 7 verse 5. Let's read that thing again. In Micah. Micah chapter Come Micah on. chapter 7 verse 5. Mm -hmm. Trust ye not in a friend. Put ye not confidence in a guide. Stop right there. So this friend, which is your wife, which you're supposed to have proved according to Sirach 6 and 7, which you did not, guess what happened? It says, put ye not confidence in a guide. Now this same wife that you're supposed to prove, now she's the one that's guiding you. Watch this. Because guess what? When correction goes out, when you be sitting together in the house, she'll be saying, do you really believe that class? And she'll come with, she'll come, she'll come to you very slick. She'll use some slick tissue, flat height. You understand? So that she can see where your mind is at. Do you believe what, what the class was about? Do you believe that? I don't believe that. Nah, baby, you know, you know how, you know how leadership is. You know, leadership is always, uh, leadership is passionate. You're going to be justifying like that. No, 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 no. Mm -mm. She's trying to figure out, do you believe that stuff? Because if you do, we have a problem. Okay, keep going. Keep the doors of thy mouth from, the her, from her that lieth in thy bosom. It says, keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. Because this, the reason why she's able to do all these things that we read, because you are a beta male. You understand? Guess what? Because you be spewing all these things during that pillow talk. And it all, it happens after when? You have the sex because she knows how to do you good in the bedroom. And then once she does all of that, guess what? Immediately after it's done, now she's going to talk to you about the class that leadership brought out. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's exactly what Delilah did to Samson. You see, there's nothing new under the sun. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. Okay, now watch this thing. Jump down to verse 10. Micah 7, verse 10. Verse 10. Mm -hmm. Then she that is mine enemy shall see it. Stop right there. You see who this guide that you trust upon? Your wife being your counselor. God says that's she's the enemy of God right there. Then she that is mine enemy shall see the judgment. Keep going shall see it and shame shall cover her which, which, which said unto me where is the Lord thy God you see that thing because this woman does not trust in this Bible she don't believe the book she hate the book and she hate the people bringing it, bringing it out that's why she's asking these foolish questions where is the Lord thy God okay come on mine eyes shall behold her the law says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with this type of this woman, this Jezebel woman. Come on. Mine eyes shall behold her. Mm -hmm. Now shall she be trodden down as the mire of the streets. The law says, we're gonna, we, we're gonna, she's going to be destroyed. The law says, I'm going to destroy this Jezebel woman. You understand? Not only will Jezebel be destroyed, you also, because you are joined to Jezebel, you're going to die too. Because instead of listening to me, you listening to Jezebel, I'm going to destroy you as well. Watch this. I'm going to show you the spirit of our Lord and Savior when it came to this Jezebel type of spirit. The spirit of Jezebel, give me Luke 11 verse 27. Luke 11 verse 27. Watch this.
Luke chapter 11, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice. Now, this woman, incident, hold on. This woman, this Christ is teaching, right? Now, there's a woman in the audience. Now, she wants to usurp authority over the man and exalt the woman above the man. That's why a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice. Always the black woman with a big black mouth. Keep going. And said unto him, mm -hmm. Blessed is the womb that bear thee. You see what she's saying? And Hold on. Blessed is the womb that bear thee. What is she telling Christ? She's Listen, remember, she wants Christ to praise Mary. That's what they are doing in the Roman Catholic Church, by the way. Because they praise Mary. They don't talk about Jesus the Christ. They don't talk about the Most High. They are always worshipping Mary. That's what this woman wanted Christ to do. You see that thing? Read. Right? Blessed is the womb that bear thee, mm -hmm. and the perps which thou hast sucked. So he's, she's telling Christ that Christ must now worship the woman, Mary, you understand, and the perps that thou hast sucked. Worship the breast. Don't let go of that breast. Be a mama's boy. Be a better male. That's what she's teaching. That's what she's trying to do, basically, right here. Next verse. Let's see how our Lord and Savior dealt with this. Watch this. But he said, mm. Yea, rather, yea, blessed rather, are they. No, no, he said, Yea, rather, meaning, I, yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying, but this is what I'm saying. Keep going. Yea, rather, Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Boom. That's some heavy stuff right there. To hell with what you're saying. No, no. Blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. So Christ, I'm not worshiping the woman. You understand? She was pushing, she was, she was pushing feminist, the feminist movement on Christ right here. That's what she was trying to do. Feminism. She was trying to push feminism on Christ. And Christ rebuked her, rebuked her sharply. Okay? Watch this. Give me Revelation 2, verse 20. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 20. Read that thing for me. Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, Mm. which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. You see what the objective is? Hold on. You see what Jezebel's objective is? Jezebel's objective is to, is to teach and to seduce the men to commit fornication. What is the fornication? We read it in Wisdom of Solomon. Worshipping the woman, role reversals. You understand? That's what that's the spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel, she loves beta males because she knows she can rule over them. You understand? Read verse 20 again. Revelation chapter 2, verse 20. Come on. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, mm -hmm. which calleth herself a prophetess. Read. To teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. You see that thing? Idolatry. That's Jezebel's mind. That, this is Jezebel's business model right here. Jezebel's business model is to teach the men and to seduce these men to commit fornication. You understand? And what? Idolatry. Next verse. Come on. Verse 21, mm. and I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. That's the same woman that we saw, okay, when we were in Katlehong, when we was teaching. That's Jezebel right there. Go ahead. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, mm -hmm. and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. You see what Christ is saying? It says, I will cast her into a bed, meaning she's going to be put to death, and them that commit adultery with her, meaning her followers. Jezebel has followers. 
into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds. Next verse. Read. Verse 25, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And I will kill her children with death. The children is those that follow her. Read. And all the churches shall know that, that I am, I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. Mm. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. You see what Christ is saying? He says, I'm going to judge you according to your own doings. That's what he's saying right there. So now what I wanted to show, go back to Luke 11, verse 27 and 28 again. You understand? Because what Christ is rebuking is rebuking the church of daughters. Thyatira means the Greek word to means daughters. Okay? Go back to Luke 11. Okay? Luke 11, verse 27 and 28. Luke chapter 11, verse 27. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, as he spake these things, a certain woman of the company lifted up her voice and said unto him, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou hast sucked. Read. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. All oh, praise to the Most High. That's beautiful right there. That's beautiful right there. I'm going to end the class right here. All oh, praise to the Most High God. Uh, let's break bread in the honor of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for sacrificing himself for the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. 